to welcome Minneapolis Junior Senior High School sports school sports fans to a venue a little bit unfamiliar to uh, Minneapolis High School sports. Salina Central Stadium. Here it's May 11th, 2012. We're here for the annual NCAA League Meet. Mike Perry and Dale Leach here to bring you the uh, preliminaries and final running events for the girls and boys of Minneapolis High School at the NCAA League Meet here today. Looking forward to seeing some good competition. Uh, Sacred Heart is the host school today in the NCAA and they have made arrangements to use this fine sports facility here at Salina Central High School. First up will be the uh, 100 meter hurdles followed by the 110 meter hurdles. We will broadcast the events so we can see there is a representative of the Minneapolis Lions squad, either girls or boys, in an event. With that, we'll be back for the first event we see coming up. Again, this is Dale Leach and Mike Perry here on Eagle Communications Channel 20. Okay, coming up is the second heat of the girls' 100 meter high hurdles. Is it high hurdles? No. Low hurdles. It just says 100 meter hurdles, but they're low. They'll be low, the boys will be high. Which is, that's, that would be right. Mar Pounds for the Lions in lane six, which is the outside, very outside running lane here in this race. I think the blue, red, and white will be Republic County, Dale, and I think you're right. The red and white will be the Russell runners. <coughs> of course, black and orange are what's her names up the road. We will probably favor to walk away with the meet. Yeah. Though Sacred Heart, I think, in the boys' side will challenge the Trojans as much as anybody. They just have so many kids in each event, they just are tough yeah. to uh -huh. deal with. Unless you've got a top three participant. Well, they they kill you coming out of the field events and then just roll from there. <laughs> I Yeah, you're absolutely right, Dale. <laughs> Those field events, uh, Beloit just has dominated over the years. Numbers, numbers makes it. a difference. Beloit Southeast, Republic County, and Minneapolis. Mar Pounds in the outside lane. But we aren't going to be ready to go here as soon as I thought they might. I still got the red flag hung up down here. We'll be right back. <laughs> okay. White flag is up saying go, go to it. And you know, Dale, you look right back behind them. Uh, we've got a really fast heat behind you. We've got three heats here in the oh, ladies' okay. 100 meter hurdles. Uh, Mar Pounds is in, in this one. Of course, these are prelims, so the top seven or eight, are there eight track uh, lanes here? Yes. Top eight will advance and go to the finals, so Mar's got a chance to get in there. There is a faster heat behind her, but even with that, she can get in here if she can get a pretty decent time. The southeast girl is out quick. That would be Brooke Wells. Mar right there and third in this heat. And it's a nice run by Mara. She was clean over all the hurdles down through there. About a 17-4 for Mara. We'll see what the... I say another heat deal that, you know, they're calling, that's the second call for the 100-meter dash. So if they clear the track... Well, they're clearing the track. So that was the last heat of the girls. Good, good. So well, these girls chance. are just getting ready for a 100-meter dash. Yeah. So I was mistaken there. As they were lining up, I thought we were going to have a 30. Yeah, well, third heat. that was a good good potential conclusion there. So the prelims for the ladies' 100-meter dash is next. And they're lining up, so we'll be right back. It shouldn't be, but just a I'm minute. Uh, I'm shocked that they aren't doing the boys' 110 here. While they had the hurdles out, yeah. <laughs> 
Uh, well, they do do 110, so they'll move the boys so the back. The order, the order of the meet is 100 meters, then the 110, then do the 100 yard dashes, 100 meter yep. dashes. But. Uh, But we'll uh, keep an eagle eye out for Minneapolis representatives. We'll be right back. Okay, coming up is the 100 meters prelims, second for the girls. Second. Uh, Second heat. Yeah. Riley Baker will be in lane four for the Lions. Any other Lions in there? Not that I see on the sheet uh, in this heat. Uh, we will have a third heat, and we will have uh, J.C. Crossan and Kristen Klein. Okay. J.C.'s got a pretty decent time. But, uh, Baker's is a little bit better. Uh, not quite the 12-4 as Bailey Brown, but Riley's right there at 12-8, so... We could have pretty good competition in the girls' 100-meter dash. There's no other. There is one girl from Beloit at 13.01. Sacred Heart girl here. There are two of them, but uh, none at which are the speed at which Riley Baker will run this 100-meter dash. We've got a white flag, Dale, so I think they're going to back them into the blocks here. I see the starter now. Look right at the outside lane. Gun is up. And they're set. And it's a good start. Baker in the middle of the track running real easy. Effortless, effortless Lee right down the middle. Now striding out nicely, Riley Baker will win this second heat in a time of... Uh, I didn't get it stopped. Apologize. Dale's got some, a new program on his stopwatch. It was amazingly accurate at the last track meet we were at, and he's downloaded a little button so he can use the button on the side. I have to get my finger used and to the button. He's going to have to get used to the button instead of tapping the screen. So, Prelims... Uh, We'll get used to it. Soon enough, lane three is J.C. Crossan. And in the outside lane is Kristen Klein. So we have two ladies from Minneapolis in this heat. See if J.C. can Still scoot along. I think she's still working the kinks out of that surgically repaired knee and then the broken ankle or the leg bone after that. So the ex extra middle in her ankle. Yeah, I think if she can get that leg whipping, Ashlyn's going to have a full day today. 800, 4 by 8, 400, 4 by 4. Anna Trahan not able to make the trip as she was under the weather before they get even got on the bus. So that's a big loss to the ladies team as Anna ran the two mile, the mile, the 800, four by eight. <coughs> now do we have two, we have two runners in this. J.C. Crossens in three and the Chris Klein girl, yep. Kristen Klein Kristen is in Klein. lane seven. Looks like this will be the last heat of the ladies as the boys are lining up. We'll get the Dietrich kid. He's pretty fast from Sacred Heart. We'll see if he still has wheels like he did last year at State, Dale. Uh, what I've been reading, I think he still does. <laughs> oh, good. Look at the start by Crossing out there. Klein with uh, kind of a slow start, but J.C. digging now. Now she's stretching, striding out. She got close, but I think it was just a close second. Ahead. Twelve ninety four. Ooh, that's, that's good. And fifteen sixteen for Klein. Both of those would be 
uh, best time they've had. Crossing under 13 with 12 something, she possibly could uh, get into the finals, Dale. Great weather conditions today for oh, riding, beautiful. and not beautiful. too windy, not too hot, not no too cold. Humid. Yeah, no, no moisture. I mean, gosh, what more can you ask for? Well, I hope you don't jinx us. Yeah. Get a shower come through, but you and I have the privilege of having part of the press box down here to ourselves, which this is cool. And I'm always grateful when you try that for the press box, Dale. Well, I'm not bashful to ask anymore. <laughs> for a few years I was, but in the 12th year of doing this stuff, I, I'm not bashful anymore. Okay, looks like we have, is that Corey Eggers in lane six for Minneapolis? Lane five. There's a lion in the, in the event anyway. Well, I think this is going to be tough. Okay, boys, 100 meter. First heat, prelims. That Ty Gerard's got an 11.3. He's right out there in lane five. Baker closest to us out in lane six. Okay, so two runners. Yeah. yeah. Troubling me is I'm not seeing Egger in any of the heats. The gun is up. And the kid is fast. He brings him set. Ty Gerard in the middle of the track. Baker down here on lane six. Didn't get a real quick start. Gerard about a fourth, and Baker sixth. If in fact that the first one that went across, I had a 12-12, I think. Is that would have that been Baker or Gerard? That would have been Gerard. Okay. Now that the kids have shaved their head. Yes, in honor of Dr. Yoxel. We have anybody yet? There out outside lane seven is he Matt Comfort maybe. Gyro. No. Oh, okay. It does look like Comfort, but Co Comfort has a shaved head. I saw him last night. The first call, <laughs> girls, meter dash. This will be the second heat of the boys, and I believe we will have Hideo Gyro, foreign exchange student for Minneapolis High School. Excuse me, Jaro Hideo. I got him turned around. Got a pretty decent time. He and Baker ran about the same. Jar Gerard a little faster, and Corey Egger is not a 100 yard dash guy, I guess. I do know he's a 400. He runs a really decent, about a 51 flat 400. One of the better 400s I've seen this year, especially his. It was very good there at the Minneapolis Invitational. Well, we've got a white flag if we can get them set here. And the gun is up. Starter is backing them in the blocks. Jaro Hideo. Jaro in the lane closest to us. He's digging, trying to get a little more speed, but looks like the pack kind of ran away from him there. Good effort. One more heat coming up. And we do not have anyone in this heat, Dale. Okay, so we'll be back for uh, maybe the 200 meters or whether they're going to put the high hurdles out. On right, the that's... Hard to tell. 110. Anyway, we'll Looks like they're gathering for 200, but who's anyone's guess? Okay, we're going to have the prelims here. First prelim for the 200 meters. 
girls. We have at least one participant in this already. Out in lane seven. Almost looks like J.C. Crossing. Is she on the list? Yes, she is. Uh, that's J.C. Crossing. And I'm not blind in one eye and can't see out of the other on this. Yeah, we will have uh, three runners. It looks like we'll have Kristen Klein, J.C. Crossing, and Riley Baker running the 200-meter prelims. And as Dale mentioned, this does look like uh, J.C. Crossing backing into the blocks as the starter is trying to get them set here. Yeah, that's... J.C.'s out in line, lane seven. Republic County's out in front of her in lane eight. Looks like a Beloit runner behind her in lane six. This could be a pretty good race here. First heat, of course, but still. Actually, they had Crossing and Klein in uh, heat number three, so they've jumbled, moved some runners around. Maybe they don't have three heats. They're set. Good start. Crossing off real nice. Lloyd on the inside. That's Bailey Brown, I'm sure. Yeah, they've mixed and matched. That's Brown in front. She's way out there. Crossing running nicely in third. She needs to stay right there in know. third. Not sure that's crossing. Is it? Hair color looks like it, but I yeah, it walks like her. Yeah. From a distance, it looked like her, but as she was running by, I had to doubt myself. <laughs> okay, we'll get Riley Baker in this heat for sure. I don't know if Kristen. Klein will be in this one, though. Yes, she will be. Uh, Kristen and Klein will be in lane one. Baker out there in probably lane four, as Baker has probably one of the best uh, 200 times. Brown would be the only one that was, yes, Brown is just barely faster than Riley Baker. So we've got a hookup for the 100-meter dash and the 200 for those two girls and probably the 400, I would guess, also. Yes, Brown at 101. Giles, 102. So Minneapolis uh, has got some pretty stiff competition in this meet. Starters got them backed into the blocks. This is the prelims of the girls' second heat, 200 meters. Riley Baker and Kristen Klein. Baker in, I think uh, Dale said, lane four. Yes, and she's out nicely. As she comes around the turn, she will have the lead here and is running away from the pack here as she drives to finish. Klein digging also. Riley Baker will finish in the lead of this heat. Dale have a time for us. The still experimenting with the time for Baker is 26.76. Good. And I believe Klein's would be 3309, unless I touched it too soon on her. 26 would be under her 2780 mark. Now the boys, and we should get uh, Corey Egger on this one, I would think. No. We get Colton Baker. Baker's out in lane eight, I would say. You know, with all the... And we have a runner in lane one. Jaro.
is the only other Minneapolis runner, so they put them all here, or they're going to run it in two heats. Colton Baker out in lane eight, and Jaro Hideo. I know I'm murdering that last name. Would you like to give it a go, Dale? No, nope, you, you can murder it probably just as easy as I can. We could have Drew Dietrich in this heat and Brandon Rapp. from Sacred Heart. Sacred Heart does have some sprinters in this league meet. The Dietrich kids are fast. Fun to watch. We saw him run down state last year and cleaned up. Had a good day, didn't he? Mm -hmm. I don't think he's dropped off any. Okay, that starter is backing them into the blocks and trying to get them at least that far along. His gun is up, but they don't look like they're close to being ready to go. They better be. He's got them set. Jaro lane one, Baker out in lane eight. Public County kid, uh, that'd be the one that ran at Minneapolis. This would be a Dietrich in front. That would be a Dietrich in front. Baker and Jaro at the end of this heat. Yeah, Zach Berzon. Berzon ran at Minneapolis. Pretty fast heat right there with Dietrich in that thing. One more heat to go. I don't think Minneapolis will field anyone in this heat. Yes, I don't believe so either. Okay, with that, the next thing up will be the finals, which start in 55 minutes before they realize it. that we'll be back well Mike and I are sitting here almost taking a nap and we're getting ready for the girls four by eight I don't have my stopwatch ready nothing Mike I gotta get in gear get us plugged in Dale we left I didn't want to leave it up here Mara pounds are we on we are on we're in lane, what, four, three? Yes. Out there in four, they're not running lane one as Mara Pounds will lead off for Minneapolis. Eight track, four by eight. Five team. Southeast in two. Sacred Heart three. Minneapolis four. Republic County five. And it looks like Beloit out there. And yeah, they're in the far lane six. Six. So we're missing a school, Ellsworth. It's tough. To f we are. I haven't seen Ellsworth at all. Have you? No. It is tough to fill to four by eight. You need quality 800 runner, and it's not easy to find four, let alone two. This is Mara Pounds will run the opening leg for Minneapolis. Minneapolis will have Mara Pounds and. Lucy Giles, Kennedy Allison, and let me find the Ashland Macy. Ashland will probably run the anchor since the, uh, I think it's Anna Trahan, didn't even get on the bus. She was sick this morning or this afternoon, didn't even come to the meet. And uh, Grace Peters is experiencing some shin splint problems. Republic County out to a little bit of a lead here. Southeast Sacred Heart passing southeast. Mar Pounds running nicely in fourth. We've got some uh, 
Speedy runners up in front of her, so she is running comfortably. There, uh, right behind the southeast runner. Republic County, Sacred Heart, Southeast, Minneapolis, and Beloit. And I've seen it change drastically from lap to lap here as Sacred Heart's reeling in Republic County. The wind kind of circling. We thought it was had moved around to the north, but I can't tell for sure. Sacred Heart does move past Republic County. Yeah, it's supposed to get to northwesterly wind. Cool front coming through. Mara coming down the back stretch. Still has a nice lead on the Bloit runner, trying to make up a little distance on southeast. And it looks like Republic County and Sacred Heart are going to have a little bit of a race as Republic County passes Sacred Heart right back. And now we'll sprint to the finish here as they will hand off. And no, it will be Ashland Macy running the second leg. Good idea, I think. Lucy's been running strong. She'll probably anchor. And, uh, and Ashland will have a pretty good shot here at getting. Boy, to start to close the, the gap a little bit on Pounds. First time out, Mara filling in here in the 800. Runs a really nice 800 here. First split, first time running this grueling race. This 800's not easy to run now. Ashlyn Macy will have her work cut out for as she's going to uh, try and reel in the southeast girl. But she can do it. 259.35 for Mara on her split. To what? 259.35. Ashland, a state qualifier last year at the, in the 800. She's got about 80 meters to make up on third place. She does. The southeast runner is pretty decent runner there. So Ashland will give it a go here on the second lap. But it's Sacred Heart and Republic County are pretty much out in the lead here away from the rest of the pack. Southeast, third. National Macy, I think making up a little ground here. Yes, she is, and Down I think about 50 meters now. you're going to like what you see here as the southeast girl is fading fast, and Ashland's getting her second wind. I think Ashland will reel her in, and believe it or not, but what was she, 80 meters behind at one time, yeah, Dale? Yeah, easily. She's now down to 30 to 40, I'd say. Keep watching, folks. This is not over Minneapolis. And Republic County still holding the lead by about five meters on Sacred Heart over here. Ashland, with 300 meters to go, is almost caught the southeast girl. What a run by Ashland Macy. Just a steady pace has almost got her right back into third place Minneapolis couldn't maybe contend here and there we go Minneapolis third place Macy with she's pouring the speed on what a what a leg by Ashlyn Macy <laughs> 80 meters behind and she's going to end up 80 meters ahead but she's got Sacred Heart in sight with just about 80 meters behind her. So Kennedy Allison, we'll see if she can make up a little distance here. Kennedy running for Anna Trahan. And Lucy Giles is going to get the anchor for Minneapolis. So here we go. Good handoff to Allison. Southeast. 232.93. Who? That was a decent 800, that's Ashland. for sure. Look at Kennedy go. She can run an 800. Yes, she can. Just about 80 meters behind the Sacred Heart runner, Republic County out in the lead. 
has got a sizable lead, but Kennedy Allison, I didn't know she could run an 800. Nothing wrong with that. She's got a long stride. Coach Smith right down there encouraging Kennedy on. This is a tough time here, the second lap of this. Look at Allison move. She can run them. Looks very strong, doesn't she, Dale? Yes, she does. Strength and track helps them in basketball, doesn't it, Dale? That's, <laughs> the, that's what they <laughs> preach. <laughs> Allison has reeled in the first and second. I'm not so sure she may not. She might get up there with that Republic County girl. She's slowing. Yes, she is. Sacred Hartman has now passed Republic County runner here in the second lap of the second leg. Go, Kennedy, go. If she looks at him now, she About was... 50 meters behind the second place right now is Allison. She was way back when she went down the back stretch last time, and now, just as Dale mentioned, 45, 50 meters. And she's continuing to run very strong. She's not done yet. She needs somebody on the back stretch over there to give her a little more encouraging encouragement because she is she is going to be there at the end of this if she can. She's really giving the next leg in. runner a, a, a decent a chance. chance here. Yeah. Giles, a really strong 800 runner, is of course all the rest of the teams run their their anchor. But Kennedy with a good finish here is going to give Giles a shot at this thing. Nice leg by Kennedy Allison. 229.82. Good grief. That's a tad faster than Tyler, or than uh, Macy. Longer legs. <laughs> I would have bet. Ashlyn had the better time, but look at Giles go. She is, of course, a lot of that depends on where the handoff, you know. Oh, yeah. Yep. So probably about an equivalent. Well, Southeast and Beloit will not catch Minneapolis, that's for sure. Giles is closing the gap on second pretty good. Lucy Giles might get close to this Republic County girl with just she she will you just you can tell by the stride she's running at and the Sacred Heart girl isn't none too fast up there in the front they've got another lap to go Lucy's got the strength here she's much stronger runner than the two in front of her Lucy Giles just 10 or 15 meters behind now Lloyd Oh, they're just now handing off, so they're they're way back. Yeah, they're lapped. <laughs> this could be interesting. I Dale, think Lucy this is surprisingly will pass Republic County, but I don't know if she can catch Sacred Heart. You know, with uh, Mara Pounds in there and uh, Kennedy Allison running in place of uh, our two runners that couldn't make it today, what a what a race! This is good. Lucy just runs at even pace all the way around, and she'll be fine. No need to stand on it just yet. I think she'll be there at the end. Yeah, that Republic County girl struggling just a little bit. I don't know if Lucy can catch Sacred Heart. She'd pull up lame, she could, but I, yes. I think it's too far to go. Well, the Republic County girl's got something left in the tank. Surprisingly enough, Lucy, uh, she will not catch Lucy. Lucy just too strong down the stretch. Much stronger runner there, Lucy Giles. Wow. What a finish. I, you, uh, you wouldn't have thought the girls would have been that close at the end. Second, second place finish. Well, somehow, for the Lady Lions. Great race. Great it race. was a great race. Yeah, that's very nice race. All girls did well there, that's for sure. That's not an easy race. 
Minneapolis boys has a four bait also. Hunter Clark, Gunner Mick, Skyler Reitbrock, and Corey Egger. Their time at 10 32.72 I got on that. That's pretty good, Dale. Boys time's right around 9.24, so. Nine fifty eight point six six is the school record. Yeah, I have a slight acquaintance there that ran the anchor on that team. Uh, <laughs> Lindsay somebody. Being my <laughs> middle daughter. <laughs> I might add she just got done running the uh, Memorial Marathon down in Oklahoma City. Just a little 26.2 mile deal. She ran it in three hours and 49 minutes. Wow. Pretty good uh, Pretty good race for her. It started raining halfway through. Her split was 153, so she ran the second half faster than the first half. Started raining. She loves to run in light rain and uh, brought it in every little wet. Not really ready to eat any lasagna at the end when uh, we sat down to eat, but it took them a little while to get all the functions and stomach uh, wound up ready to go after a 26 mile thing. Kendall ran the half marathon. She did a good race, 13.1 mile. That's further than she'd gone. And she had a good race, just ran it right around two hours. Yeah. I just can't imagine running two hours, Dale. No, I can't either. I can't <laughs> imagine we're running ten minutes either. <laughs> All right, boys, four by eight coming up. Minneapolis will be in lane five. Plug. I had to plug my daughters, Dale. Why, why not? Uh, is this Corey Eggers, I think, will be the leadoff runner? Or no, that's no, Hunter Clark. That would be Hunter Clark. Yep. Sacred Hearts to their inside, Beloit's to the outside. I think Corey will probably anchor this. Uh, Gunner Mick will run second, I believe. Skyler Reitbrock third, and then Corey Ager. Gun is up. There will be out. two teams, maybe just a tad bit faster than Minneapolis Sacred Heart and. Southeast field a pretty decent team, but Hunter Clark goes to front for Minneapolis. Just four teams in this four of eight. Southeast, Sacred Heart, Minneapolis, and Beloit. As I mentioned, it's just not easy to get four runners that'll run that 800. That is not an easy race. Coach Smith sure likes what she sees here as Hunter Clark right out in front of this thing. That's all the better for Minneapolis to have a nice lead like that. Is that Hunter? Or Is somebody that Hunter? Else? It looks kind of like Corey Ager, doesn't yeah, it? it really does. <laughs> I, I'm shorter than, than yeah. Hunter. Yeah, I think that is uh, Corey Ager. I can tell by the way he runs. I yeah. doesn't look like Hunter Clark. That is Corey Ager. His name's on there. I just assumed he would probably anchor. He's got a 30-meter lead, easy, on the Sacred Heart Runner. Gunner Mick will be next for Minneapolis, then Skyler Reitbrock. These shaved heads these days, uh, it's kind of hard to pull the... That is Corey Ager, I believe. Hmm. I believe so. Yeah, it's pretty quick. 800. Yeah, that is. Shorter in uh, statue. Young man that hopes to run collegiately. Gunner Mick with the carry. 203.66 split. A nice 201. 203.66. Gunner running smoothly down the backstretch. Sacred Heart Runner trying to gain some ground on him southeast and Bloyt's way back there. 
And by the looks of the time, I kind of look for Bloit to stay back there. <laughs> looks like it's going to be Sacred Heart in Minneapolis at the end of this thing, Dale. Sacred Heart runner is gaining a little bit slowly but surely on Nick. I think we're going to... Can Nick hold him off is the question. Got her with a nice stride here with the carry. Sacred Heart runner's got a, that's that Chavez kid right there, isn't it? Uh, Remember him in basketball? Could be. Well, it looked like him anyway. I have a hard time putting a name to a face if they aren't wearing a basketball uniform and a number. And he's got kind of a beard now, doesn't he? <laughs> yeah. He didn't have that in basketball. No. He? He Here's going to put the move on Nick. A gunner right there with him maintains the inside posi uh, position there. That I'm not, uh, He's going to get by him uh, there. Uh -huh. Look at that javelin go over there, Dale. Did you see that? Yep. Oh my gosh, somebody's got an arm. Wow, 21 foot long jump. We forgot to mention that Lucy Giles won the girls high jump. Yes. Jump of five foot. Tyler Macy got fifth in the boys. Sacred Heart hands it off. Now Minneapolis, Skylar Reitbrock. 2030, no, 20834, second leg. Give Skylar something to go after and he'll go. And Sacred Heart runner in front of him, Reitbrock trying to close it just a little bit and does down the back stretch. Knows he's got his work cut out for him. He's got a pretty good runner in front of him and Sacred Heart runner. I'm sure they've met before, but he's moving up on his hip, so he's in perfect position here to draft down the home stretch. If he can, he's just going to go right on around him. Skyler looking strong. He's a good distance runner. Man, he's got a steady pace, doesn't he, Dale? Yes, he, does. he hasn't let up a bit. The only thing, I, the flaw I see in his run, he needs to run just a little bit closer to that line when he's going around there. That guy can almost get by him on the inside, and you don't want that to happen. Skyler, strong. Second arc's going to try to get by him again. We'll see if Skyler's got a little kick here. 200 meters to go. Reitbrock with a strong carry here for Minneapolis. Will, and yeah, that is Hunter Clark. So we did have Corey Egger on the leadoff. That's a nice, nice coaching uh, ploy right there. Get out with Corey Egger. Now Reitbrock is going to have to stand on it as Sacred Heart. Gets by him. Skyler, still something left here as he's coming down the home stretch. Sacred Heart will hand off first. And he'll get it to Hunter Clark. About 210 21 for Skyler. He had a little distance to make up and did it. Got it Minneapolis back into first place, but just could not quite hold it. Hunter's running well. Yes, he is. This 800 uh, race is a little tricky to sometimes figure out. That first lap seems to be an easy go, but uh, about 200, 300 meters left in that second lap, it's a different ball game, and you kind of have to pace yourself a little bit. It's not a 400. <laughs> Oh, you mean I got another lap to you go? Got oh. another, you've got another 300 meters to go, and now Hunter Clark on the home stretch. We'll see if he can. That Sacred Heart runner is running very smoothly. Gun lap. Hunter's moving around a little bit 
up in the shoulders and head. You can tell a distance runner like the Sacred Heart runner there are smooth in the shoulders and the head. You don't want to be bobbing around. It's just extra movement you don't need. Look straight ahead and don't. There you go. Just look Hunter. straight ahead and go. Hunter says come back here. Yep, yep. Really, man. Don't let him get it. Hunter. It's a nice race. Minneapolis surprisingly right up there at the top of this thing. And they're fixing to lap the Bloit team. Hunter with a nice kick here with 50 meters to go, but Sacred Heart Kid's a little faster there, isn't he? Yep. Hunter, and Hunter's wearing down. Which good I race. Don't blame him. Very good race. Good job, guys. And Eight, gals. 28 18 for the Lions. Well, we had them at 8.33, their best, so if they did 8.28, they PR'd today. Mm -hmm. I think the girls came close but under split was 20597 so we had a 20366 a 20834 a 21021 and a 20597 good race guys what's next Dale next is the 100 meter hurdles finals good and then the 110 hurdles finals southeast finish for the up. boys and Beloit. Mara Pounds did qualify, so we'll be running this for the Lions, and Hunter Clark will run for the boys. We'll be back with both of them. Okay, time for the finals of the girls' 100 meter. Mara Pounds in lane seven here on the very outside. Got two Russell girls running, three Beloit girls running. Southeast and Minneapolis. And you know, Dale, you mentioned it earlier. Where's Ellsworth? I haven't seen him and anyone. And usually they've got some distance mm -hmm. runners. Yep. So All their Orozco's are gone, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Well, the starters got them set. And we're off. Ooh, we got a false start by somebody. And he's going over to lane number two. Uh, Beloit runner. Yeah, she DQ'd. Is that Brown? No. no, she's tall and gangly. I can't. Brown's still in right next to Pounds in five, I believe. Well, there are two Browns. There's yeah. Bailey and then her. Both of them are really or both of them are in that 100 meter dash so we've got a hurdler so that's taking the field down to Russell to Beloit southeast and Minneapolis more pounds closest to us as we're filming here the gun is up And they're set. It's right in the middle of the track. I can't tell that she doesn't look like a brown, but uh, our pounds running at just a close fourth or fifth. And there are some people in the way. I can't tell if she leaned and got fifth or uh, not. I'm not sure that she did. I have her for 16.94 for the time. 16.94 seconds. Now they will adjust the height of the hurdles and the distance for the boys 110. We'll be right back. 110 high. Okay, the white flag's up. All right, boys 110 meter high hurdles coming up. Hunter Clark for the Lions in lane six. He's got one runner to his outside yet. Telling uh, Bill uh, Dale some of the runners here: Danny Perez, Beloit, R.J. Jackson, Beloit, 
Austin Thalen, Sacred Heart, Alex Nemechek, Beloit. These are, <laughs> these are quality athletes. Uh, Trevor Webb, Sacred Heart, and Hunter Clark. So he's uh, he's got his work cut out for him. There's some good athletes in this race. Pretty good hurdlers. Hunter just anchored that four by eight team that finished second. We'll see if he's got some Think strength there. Neon green socks make them faster. That's yes. I see some of them. Yes. <laughs> got his up. 110 high hurdles. No prelims here. We just have six or seven hurdlers that can would qualify anyway. They're off. Good start. Middle of the track, Beloit and Sacred Heart. Well, I thought Hunter, Hunter had some Clark babies outside. Doing well. not, I guess not. He's in fourth right now. And that's where he will finish. Nice job, Hunter Clark. I think I clicked a little bit late, late but I have him unofficially at 18. He finished 41. ahead of Danny Perez and RJ, or uh, yes, RJ Jackson of Lloyd. So nice effort there by Hunter Clark just finishing up that 4 by 8 Runs a really nice 110 hurdle. And a fourth place finish. Next up is the 100 meter dash finals, girls and boys. Riley Baker should be running for the girls. Yes, and they're going to run them exactly the same direction. JC Crossan and uh, Riley Baker are qualified, so we have two Lady Lions in the 100 meter dash. We'll be back with that when they get them set up. Okay, we got the white flag for clearance on the 100 meters to start. The gun is up here. Riley Baker is in lane two. Actually, lane three, but the second one, second position there for. No, that's J.C. Crossan. Oh, that's J.C. Cro oh, two runners. Okay, Crossan. Yeah, we have Crossan and Baker. Crossan is in lane two, and Baker is where? Lane five. Five, yep. Well, he's got the gun up. They're running them off pretty decent, yeah. you know. The way it started, we wondered. Yeah, they're, they're we were good. second guessing how quick it was going to run. They are set. Good start. Baker in the middle of the track going to have to run down Brown in the end. And that Bailey Brown, that Riley will give her a race here. Good race. Bailey Brown, Riley Baker. I think J.C. Crossan got fourth. I think so, too. <laughs> That's pretty good points right there. I had nice race, ladies. Twelve two five unofficial. Riley Baker. And I need to flip this back over. Twelve eight two. You had her twelve five. Twelve point. Five, yeah, know. she could have PR'd right there, that's for sure. J.C. Crossan right there in the points for the Lady Lions. Good race there. School record is Jessica Milam in 1999 at 12.06. Ooh, that's fast. Yes, it is. She was a fast young lady. We got the boys uh, set in the blocks. Uh, we'll be back with them in just a minute. Burzon, uh, Minneapolis will have Corey Eggers in there, I believe. No, he did not run free lamb, so. Nope, nope. I don't know if Minneapolis will field a 100 meter dash. The Dietrich kid will be in there and he is fast. I don't see a Minneapolis uniform. I don't either. We'll be back with the Minneapolis runners. Next I don't up know, Dale might want to win. Is do we have a 1600 run? That's the next event, 1600. Yes. Girls and boys. So we'll be back for that. Girls 1600 meters. 
Kendra Gonzalez sub for the Lions. No Anna Tran. She's sick today. Just right before she got on the bus, I am told she just really got sick. And it's just not good to run distance races when you're <laughs> ill. It just doesn't work. Kendra in fourth right now. Oh, that was a cooter kid I saw running. I uh, had the beard, the dark hair, and it didn't run like Matt Goeth, and I knew you, or Matt Comfort, and I knew you told me that he had a shaved head. Yeah. That's the Runyon kid and the uh, and Cooter there. Warming up for Minneapolis. I think both of them will run the Boy 1600. But right now we have Kendra Gonzalez for Minneapolis. Running easily there, and uh, fourth just off the hip, or fifth right off the hip of the southeast girl. If she stayed right there, it'd be perfect. And she's running nice and easy right there. She's got a smooth gait to her. Makes it look kind of easy, but it's not. Three laps to go. Southeast girl is out in the lead uh, along with two of her teammates. So it's first, second, third, Sacred Heart. First, second, Sacred Heart. South, oh, yeah, it is. One, two, three. Okay. And now I know for sure Ellsworth is not here. They always have good distance runners. Yeah, we have not seen an Ellsworth uniform at all, which just shocks me. Not even an Ellsworth shirt. Well, we will be back for the final laps of this race for Kendra. Well, she's starting to put a move here on. Good. Fourth place. Is it still on? Yeah, it sure is. Good. Kendra moved up. And now she's looking at the three Sacred Heart girls. If she can stay in, the, in front of this Southeast girl. And that's, I thought she was in perfect position, but she is still a little bit stronger than uh, pr the purple southeast runner which is good but southeast thinks she's going to pass it's kind of a nice place to be in that fourth place position and southeast gets her right back two laps to go sacred heart sacred heart sacred heart one two and three now we'll be back. Sure. All right, it's the final lap. Uh, Kendra is working on getting past here by the Russell runner. The Kendra gets back into fourth. Fourth place would be a nice finish. The points would be extra nice. It's Minneapolis running well here in this track, mate. The ladies have been pointing well so far. Sacred Heart's going to claim a bunch of them here with a first, second, third place finish here in the 1600. The Russell runner just moves on her at about the 200 meter mark. Southeast will be fourth. Russell is fifth. Kendra, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, it would be fifth place if Kendra could get in front of the Russell girl. The distance is, is being applied between the two. Now Kendra with a nice finish. We'll finish in sixth place. Nice steady pace all the way. Four laps. About the same pace all the way around. 633.13. Good 1600. Yep. Next up will be the boys. We'll be back for that. Or will we have a boys runner? Yeah, we should have two. I think the. Isaac Cooter and That's the right. Runyon. Yes, I remember that now from the Minneapolis meet. Kid, I believe, and I'm going to try and get the Runyon kid's first name so I'm not just calling by his. It's Randall, isn't it? You're exactly right. Randall's got a 504. There are some kids that uh, 
are a little faster and there there's a couple of kids in the four minute four kids with four minute and something miles so well there's some Ellsworth t-shirts so they must have somebody here where right down here oh yeah maybe they just came to watch <laughs> We'll be right back with the boys. So now it's Gunner Mick got fourth in the pole vault. Getting ready to go here on the 1600. We have looks we like Reed Brock out in lane eight. Reed. Cooter yeah, in lane say, two. We've got more than just. There's three, yes. And somebody in lane one. I don't know who. Runyon is in lane one. Okay. And Isaac. Cooter is in two, and you're right. It is Skyler Reetbrock out there. Sixteen hundred meters, and as they cascade in, Reetbrock has a five twelve. He must be a little tired after that four by eight run. Cooter's right in the middle, running up in front. So, Minneapolis runners are kind of spread out here. First call of the goal is four by one hundred meter relay. That is Corey Donnelly out in the lead for Sacred Heart. Alex Kahn for Beloit, and then Randall Runyon in third. Southeast kid is Isaac Barnhart. And then we have Isaac Cooter right there in that middle pack with Skylar Reetbrock kind of coasting at the back. Skylar hasn't quite recovered from that 800 he ran. That was a heck of a race, uh, four by eight. Sacred Heart Runner is starting to put some distance. That Donnelly kid is stretching it right on out, isn't he? Isaac Cooter has moved into fifth on the back stretch here. Cooter, a very good wrestler, as you might remember, this year qualified for state. Runyon still maintaining fourth at this time. Ellsworth thing, Ben Morrell in yep. second place in the Alex Joxel with a fifth place finish Javelin. there. Javelin. Joxel with fifth. Yeah. Merrill, yeah, he's first of the Ellsworths we've heard today as far as. We just haven't seen them compete in running events. We have not seen them. Corey Donnelly for Sacred Heart. His best, 431, 1,600 meters. Cooter Will not be pressed here today, that's for sure. Cooter fell behind, but has regained those two positions back again. And uh, Runyon is going to get a challenge. Southeast kid is right on Randall Runyon's hip. And here's the leader. I Running very smoothly and easily. Yes, he is. Isaac Barnhart right on... Randall Runyon's hip as they come out of the turn. This Beloit kid is a pretty good runner of in his own. One lap to go. Randall Runyon still claiming third place. And Cooter's in fifth. Cooter with a 526, Reetbrock with a 512. Skyler has got to be a little bit tired, I would assume, not to be up. Now he goes. Kennedy Allison got fourth in something. I didn't catch what the event was, some field event. 
discus, Sorry, Dale. discus maybe. Or the javelin. Sinking it was javelin. Runyon still in third over here. Here's the leader. He's running fast for a mile. Look at this. Guy move. Wow. 4.27 something. We'll concentrate on Runyon now. About America. a 200 meter lead over the rest of the pack. Randall Runyon is going to have some competition here southeast trying to catch him, but Randall just a little bit too strong a runner there, isn't he? Yep. Randall Runyon with a nice, nice 1600 here. Third place finish for Minneapolis. Strong runner. Southeast fourth, Beloit fifth, and Cooter wow. is going to have to stand on it to hold off this southeast kid. But a little bit more speed coming down the home stretch. Isaac Cooter with a real nice race there and a sixth place finish. We'll get Mr. Reebrock somewhere here. Skyler with a 512 and Isaac Cooter with a 526. So you think Skyler would have. Uh, been a little bit up in front of him, but I think Skyler's kind of feeling the effects of that 800. Good conditioning. All right, uh, Runyon 501.03, unofficial. You know, if he ran a 501, he PR'd because his best was a 504. So nice run there by Randall Runyon. And five. 18.99 for Cooter. Goodness. 5.43.52 for Freebrock. If it was a 5.18, Cooter bettered his time by eight seconds. Wow. Yeah, that's a nice steal there. Isaac Cooter with a big run. Record for Minneapolis in 1,600 meter run is, you know who holds that? You know? I would say is either Blocklinger or Trout. Trout. P.J. Trout, 1993, four minutes, 27.03. Gee, that's booking. You saw how fast that Sacred Heart kid run there for a 420? Yep. <laughs> 20 seconds faster. Holy mackerel. That's moving. Okay, next up is the four by one relay, girls and boys. And Minneapolis will be minus a runner for the girls' side in Peters, Grace Peters, freshman. I assume she, she ran this, didn't she, at the yes. Minneapolis meet? And Minneapolis will be out in lane five. Leadoff runner might be Riley Baker. You're exactly right. We have Riley Baker, J.C. Crossan, Ashland Macy, and Kennedy Allison. This could be good. Grace Peters not here to anchor, so the girls stepped right up with uh, Kennedy Allison who stepped in real well, especially in that four by eight. That was impressive. Now she gets a shot at 100 meters. Brown girl from Beloit is in the middle of the pack here in lane four. Russell's in lane three. Republic County's out. No, Southeast Lane's out in lane eight, seven. Kennedy Allison is going to anchor this four by one. Riley Baker will lead off. And I think. Ashlyn Macy will run the curve, so it will be J.C. Crossing down the backstretch, of course. She will not run the curve, not with that surgically repaired knee. They're set. Good start, I Riley didn't, Baker. I didn't get a start. Look at that. Baker just smoked southeast to start with. We'll hand off to J.C. Crossing to run the straight on the back. Oh, nice handoff, wasn't it, Dale? Very beautiful. 
Crossing, stretching it out down the back stretch. Now, if we can get a good handoff here, Jason, or uh, Al, <laughs> I'll get her name here. Kyler Macy? No, that's Macy. Yeah. Ashlyn Not Macy. Kyler. Ashlyn Macy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I had Kyler, I had Josh. Okay. Ashlyn Macy just really pouring it on. Going to hand off to Kennedy Allison. Good handoff. We'll get Minneapolis. Oh, my. This is going to be good. Russell Girl is going to catch challenge. her. Challenge. She will catch her. No, no she, she won't. Didn't. No, <laughs> she didn't. What a race. Kennedy Allison held off Russell at the tape. I believe Minneapolis won that, Dale. Yes, no doubt about it. I don't have a time because I didn't get it started. Wow. What an effort. That leadoff leg by Riley Baker and then crossing down the back stretch, that was, every handoff was just textbook. Really nice all the way around Minneapolis with a win in the four by one. Girls record in Minneapolis for this, set in 1980. I bet Milam was in that one. Nope, nope, Milam. Milam who? Jessica, Milam. No, it's 1980. 80, oh, that's, that's way back there. No, I don't think Jessica was. No. She was just thought in God's head at that time. Uh, <laughs> 50.17 is the school mark. Oh, Klein. Lori Meredith, Jana Macy, Janet Parrish, and Karen Cooper. I'll be darned. Coming up for the boys, 100 meter, four by one relay. Record is for the boys is 43.2, set in 2005. I'll bet a Mortimer is on that one. And a Lomberger. Think so? Trevor Gassman, Jeff Doring. Kenton Lonberger and Ryan Mortimer. You got two of them. <laughs> <laughs> Minneapolis boys four by one. Colton Baker, Gage Mortimer, Ty Gerard, and Quentin Clark. Quentin Clark. He's that right guard. Uh, I guess they wait a minute. Are you sure? Well, that's what they've got on the. Uh, okay. You're right. That's the name of the our right guard. You see a feller on the back stretch running. Length to get out of his two way. from Minneapolis. I believe that's Gerard. He will hand off to. I think that's Gage Mortimer. And he will hand off to Colton Baker. And here is Quentin Clark as advertised. Not a good handoff. Terrible. <laughs> what do you expect? And look back. And he still finishes still booking, not to fourth. I, I didn't get the first uh, split, so I didn't try any others. The uh, unofficial time, 48.79, which is pretty good, actually. Yeah, th that person should never look back. You sh never should have to, and the guy back behind is responsible for getting it in there. But still. Quentin was, <laughs> Quentin was doing pretty good there for a lineman. Quentin. Picked him up and laid him Can down. Minneapolis fourth place finish in the boys four by one. But obviously, uh, handoffs have not been his forte. <laughs> Might be the first and one he's. And he didn't want to uh, have to look at the coach and say I dropped it or didn't get didn't get it in my hand. So he was. Uh, yeah, thank you. Mike. It's starting to slip. He I was, just noticed uh, it sliding. Doing home. his best to make sure he got the handoff. Very good. Nice effort by both the ladies and the guys. Especially the ladies, I just really impressed with uh, that four by one as the ladies win it. League champs in the four by one. Next will be the 400 meter dash, girls and boys.
Dietrich ran a 1075 Hunter Dale. Dietrich ran a what? 1075. Wow. In the hundred? Mm hmm. Okay, 400 meters. Uh, the Minneapolis record for girls is Linda Shea Smith, 1991. 56.37, still a state record in Class 3A. Might be seriously challenged in the next few years by Grace Peters, who we will not see today. Running for Minneapolis will be McKinney in lane two. I believe that is, isn't it? Yes. And uh, Minneapolis, I think that's it. Girls did have a fourth and a second finish in the 100 meters. J.C. Cross in fourth and Riley Baker is second. Kyla McKinney to run lane two here. This is a 400. Two Beloit runners in lanes seven and six. That's Brown in six. Or in the fourth, excuse me. Fourth lane. Russell runner in lane three. That's Peters holding the gonna hold the blocks for McKinney. Yes. We've got red enough hair there, don't we? Yes. Girls four hundred. McKinney and it, I've got Lucy Giles here on the list. So mm -hmm. oh yeah, there she is now out in lane five. There we go. Yeah, Minneapolis with two runners here. Lucy with a 102 and McKinney with a 107. Brown with a 101. So Lucy, I look for her to be right there at the end of this thing, Dale. What was what was Grace Peters Peters' best time? It's not on here. She's they not scratched running. it that early, huh? Yeah. Yeah, their, their starter is just now getting into his position after getting him set up. Again, we have Lucy Giles in lane six, and what's the McKinney girl's first name? Kylie. Kylie McKinney in lane two. McKinney's a freshman, is that correct? Yes. Giles, a sophomore. 400 meters. Starter has got the gun up, so the ladies are backing into the blocks. Grace Peters holding for McKinney. Not running today with the shin splints. Can run around 58 seconds so that would be tops of this field but right now it's Lucy Giles she's a little bit disadvantaged because Brown is on the inside of her and she can't tell where she's at but Brown probably with the lead right now Lucy on the outside as the staggers was come around to curve three and four She'll find herself a little bit behind Brown. Lucy, a strong runner, though. Brown better not take anything from for granted. Lucy right there. Second, for sure, right now. Brown starting to pull away. Here comes McKinney. Brown is pulling away. Good, strong finish by her, Lucy. A good second place finish. Kylie McKinney, just a little bit of a stretch here, could get third, does not. I think she ended yep. up fourth. Fourth, ended up fourth. Splits for the two. Uh, that was a nice Giles, race by Giles. Giles went in 10207. Good. McKinney, 10736. 
both right about their best. Mm -hmm. Nothing earth shattering, but a good finish. Minneapolis second and fourth. We have another heat. No Minneapolis runners. Surely not. Yes, we do have a second heat. I'll be darned. So we'll be back for the boys. Yes, yeah, you're right. Okay, uh, second heat of the boys 400 meter. We have Matt Comfort for the Lions in lane two and Gunner Mick out in lane six. And there should be another one with Corey Eggers in it after this one. Matt has just uh, been running a little bit so far this year. Just After coming off that knee surgery, ACL repair. Just given the okay to run uh, just a few weeks ago, and surprisingly enough, we weren't expecting him to run track this year, that's for sure. Not after that. He's running well there, though. Has made up the stagger on the Bloit runner. Now he's trying to get the next one. He's a good runner. We were pleasantly surprised at his speed last year. I asked him where that speed come from. He says it just appeared. <laughs> yeah, he's a good, fast runner. Bloit's in the lead, Bloit runner. Made him a very effective quarterback with that foot speed now. Mick is in second. Comfort's in fourth. Gunner Mick is going to finish second. And Matt Comfort fourth in that heat. I think I was a little slow to click it off, but I uh, had Mick with 54.06, followed up by Comfort with a 55.85, and that's a little slow because I was not as quick on that, shutting it off as I should have. 55 something for comfort. Final heat will have Corey Eger, Jack Nuss, Ellsworth, Alex Nemechek, Beloit, Drew Dietrich, Sacred Heart, Nathan Peterson, Southeast. You'll remember that name. And the other Dietrich, I think it's Anthony Dietrich, or Aaron, excuse me, and Taylor Crawl, Sac Sacred Heart. Corey Eggers will be in lane one. Three Sacred Heart runners here. It sure would be nice to take out one of those. Dietrich's going to be tough, to, but there's two of them there. So Dietrich in lane four and six. Nemechek and Peterson won't be easy either. This is a, a tough field right here. But the 51-7, we saw Egger run at the Minneapolis Invitational. That kid, he can get there. Minneapolis record is 49.33, set in 2001. Any guesses, Mike? Uh, Who holds that? Probably Gassman. Yes, Tanner Gassman. Though that year surprises me. Yeah, he was, that, was, that was his senior year. Yep. The gun is up. Starters got him backed into the blocks. Boy, good start here by all, Will. Go a long ways. As a Sacred Heart runner out in eight is just standing up to start. Corey Egger with a good start. Has made up the stagger on the Ellsworth kid. Jack Nuss, the Ellsworth kid. He's a long-legged dude. Now he picked up another one. Now he's going for Peterson on the outside. He's, he's looking look good, good here, Dale. Out he bet he is if he's got something left. This 400's a nasty race. Got two Dietrich kids in front of him. 
and the Beloit kid, Corey Egger, with a good race here in the 400. Here comes Ellsworth, Jack Nuss. Edges him out. There's one, two, three, four, five. Corey Egger with a good 400 there. 51 4 8 unofficial. And that would PR him with uh, the field he was running in. There were one, two, three, four, five times better than his. So good job there, Corey Egger. 51 4. Is that what you had? 5148. Mm -hmm. 5148. Corey Egger getting ready for the 300 hurdles, but that was a good finish there. The Dietrich boys were a little quicker. And the 300 meter hurdles will be next. I'm sure we'll get Hunter Clark and I think Kylie McKinney for the girls, but we'll have to wait and see. And I'll I can't check remember the if, uh, cheat sheet here. I can't remember if uh, Pounds ran this in the Minneapolis. Our pounds. Uh, meet or not. I do see Mara Pounds, I believe, lined up over there in lane five for the first heat. Once they get the yeah, they've got all the hurdles set, set up. the hurdles up. So we'll be a minute here. We'll be back when they get a little closer to the start. All right, 300 meter girls, intermediate hurdles, ready to go. Mar Pounds in lane five over here, across the way. Did you? The sheet doesn't have any other runners for the Lions. No the girls. Okay. Not an easy race. First of two heats. Let's see, probably what you consider the slower of the two heats. I'm guessing with three runners going. They will take the best times in the finish. Our pounds running second here. A Russell runner in the lead. Ooh, Mara just got over that one. They must have left it a high hurdle, huh? Yep. It's always tough to see him knock those over with your feet as you're going over. Mara walked that one right on over. Oh, the Russell girl checked up and Mara made up quite a bit of distance there at the end, but still finished second. Good race by Mara Pounds. About a 52.86 for Mara. School record is Alyssa George with a 46.15. I was going to say, I think I know who that one is. Back in, I'm sorry I didn't give you a chance to show your, your memory there. Well, I remember Alyssa George, she was a really good 300 hurdle girl and they needed one more girl for the four bait mm -hmm. and uh, lo and behold Alyssa says I'll run it how fast do you run coach uh, oh who was the coach back then Williams Williams yeah Kevin Williams says you just run and beat everyone in your heat yep or in your and that's what her goal was to do is to finish ahead of everyone. She was competitor enough that uh, that's what she did. Anyway, she set that record in 2004. It's been a little while since Miss Kansas ran <laughs> from Minneapolis. <laughs> Saw her brother Grayson by the, by the way the other day out at the golf course. He's back from Stillwater fresh from his stint as an Oklahoma State Cowboy. We'll be back. Okay, boys. 300 meter high hurdles. Is it high or intermediate? Intermediate. Intermediate. Gage Mortar for the Lions out in lane five.
record for this. I'm not even going to say the year. Give it away. I bet it's Martin Crossan. Yes. <laughs> 1979. Hey, betcha. He was a heck of a hurdler. 39.0. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. That cat could scoot. You didn't even know he was going over him. Gage is uh, looking pretty good here, too. Has made up the stagger. And is probably leading this heat. Gage Mortimer. Got a pretty good run going here. Pretty solid. You need to hold off this southeast kid. Go, Gage, go. He checked up a little bit there southeast. A little more speed. He got over to that last hurdle a little cleaner, but Gage with a nice run there. And I unfortunately didn't get a time on it. Time I'm seeing here by Gage, just a second off the beaten path. He could possibly, he had slipped into the second heat there just by about 20 tenths. So he's not far off the faster heat. He actually could have been in this other heat and did well. We will have Hunter Clark. He is in lane four. Senior. R.J. Jackson Bloy. Justin Giardo from Republic County. Alex Nemechek Bloy. Trevor Webb, Sacred Heart. Boston Wolf and Austin Palin. I've been calling him Palin, but it's Palin. 300 meter intermediate hurdles. Gage Mortimer with a real nice run there. In the first heat. That will put the pressure on these, this bunch here. If someone would have a glitch on a hurdle, Gage could easily move into points. Uh, a little Hunter's slow in, start by Hunter there. Hunter's in lane three, actually. I said he's in lane four. They sometimes don't run lane one, but I think they are here, though, it looks like. Hurdles are set up for it. Hunter right in the middle has... Made up the stagger. Going to have to go a little bit here as Sacred Heart and Bloyd are right out in the lead. He's Bloyd. got third. He's got third if he hurries. He's going to have to hurry and lean. He did. Hunter Clark with a third place finish in the 300 meter hurdles. 43.15 unofficial time for Hunter. Very good. And he has his best. 43.80, so he's just right Shaved on it. Shaved a little bit off there. Yep. Shaved. Nicely done, Hunter Clark. 800 meter run. This is one of the races Anna Trahan would be in if she was here. And the 1600 and later on the 3200. So as you can imagine, we are missing Anna Trahan here today. We Do are have also any girls runners in her absence in the, eight, in the uh, 800? I'm thinking Lucy Giles if she's yes, got anything left you. in the tank. I bet you. Unless they've got her substituting for Peters or Trey in on a relay somewhere. Coming up yet. Like well, Kennedy Allison filled in nicely so far. Girls 800 meter. Oh, yeah. Ashlyn Macy. How would I forget? She is a really nice time. 231. And I don't see a time better than hers in this 800. So... I also see Kendra Gonzalez. There will be two round, two uh, two heats. No, just one. Well, I don't see Ashlyn on the track. I yeah, she's right there beside Kendra. Oh, okay. Yeah, they okay. kind of double up in the 800. They okay. get them all on there. She's there. A little further out. That's lane four, and I guess that would be the fast lane once you get a stagger here. But if they aren't going to give that, then you want lane one. 
Ashland with a 231. Here comes the stagger. 235 Ho Hobbleman from Republic County. I bet she's got blonde hair. She sure does. Beloit runner in two. Two Republic County runners in three. Macy and Gonzalez, is it? Yes. In four. The Beloit runner in five. Southeast in six. That's Sacred Heart in lane eight. 235, 236, 237, 241 are the times right behind Ashland Macy. We've got a red flag up. That starter is not going to flinch until he sees the white. So evidently there is a timing glitch. We'll be right back. Okay, uh, girls, 800 meter run coming up Ashlyn Macy and Kendra Gonzalez in lane four good start Macy on the inside in lane four and she's got the lead right where she wants to be doesn't like to well, here comes on the inside. Hobbleman. And now they cascade over. Hobbleman has the inside position, and Ashland's going to settle for second place here. Another lap to go. Ashland knows that. She's got some foot speed along with endurance, so she's. Thinking possibly just staying right where she's at. Yeah, it's a good idea to tuck right in behind Hobbleman. Republic County let her break the wind down the home stretch, but Ashland is a little bit faster paced, and she's going to just go ahead and pass her here. I thought. Maybe not. Floyd runner right there also, so the front pack here. Kendra Gonzalez right behind Republic County. One lap to go. About a 114-11 split there for Ashland. Brockelman, Beloit. Hobbleman, Republic County has got the lead, but Ashland has got something else in mind. Every time I think she's going to pass her, she kind of checks up a little bit. The Beloit girl is staying right in there. Now Ashland takes the lead down the back stretch. The boy girl is going to go with her. This is going to be a good race. Ashland, a very gutty competitor here. Getting ready to head into the home stretch. Get a lot. The Beloit runner is passes Ashland. Coming down to 100 meters to go. Ashland is not done yet. Comes back on the outside. You bet. There's that competitor I was telling you about, Ashland Macy. The Beloit girl passed her, and Ashland Macy right back at her. Brockelman thought she had the race, but. Ashland just too strong a runner down the home stretch. Here comes Kendra Gonzalez and a good finish there by Kendra. Excellent run by Ashland Macy. And the times we had were, come on camera, stop that. For Macy was a 2.32. Excellent. 63. Right on her time, 2.32. 2.31 is her best. And uh, Gonzalez was a 2.57.94. Record for Minneapolis at 1980, 2.21.69. Mary Lutz. Mary Lutz. Here go the boys. 
It will be Skylar Rebrock in lane three. On Egger, the outside lane Egger three. in lane seven, I believe. Open 800. 800 meters, Corey Egger. 206. And Sky Reebrock, 213. So, got the Coolman kid from Republic County with a 203. Corey Donnelly from Sacred Heart with a 204. So, uh, Egger's got his work cut out for him here. Kane Comfort is in this race from Sacred Heart. That would be, I believe, Doug Comfort's yes. son. I fell asleep on the clock there, so I don't have a time going. Peterson is in it, along with Corey Knight, Jacob Peters, and Alex Kahn, Corey Donnelly, and Trevor Kuhlman. Good race. Eggers is trying to move into fifth. This will be Kuhlman up in front. Republic County. And Sacred Hearts. Sandquist right there with him. Eggers is in fifth. Three Brock is in last right now. Pretty close bunch there, the last six guys. Skyler's got a little bit of a catch in his get along there. It looks like he's a little sore, maybe. First four in a close pack. The rest of them are in a close pack. Here comes another one. 30 meters by behind. Corey Egger. Egger, I think, is running out of gas also. Sacred Heart. Sacred Heart, Beloit, and Republic County. Coolman right there. Corey Donnelly for Sacred Heart, along with, I'm just abbreviation there, I can't, Sandquist is his last name, I can't, probably Chris. Two Sacred Heart runners, one, two. And then Alex Kahn from Beloit, he's not gonna catch him. Kuhlman's trying to catch Kahn and Will, but Sacred Heart, one and two, woo! As Corey Donnelly and Chris Sandquist for Sacred Heart. Eggers is out of gas here. Don't blame him. Alex Kahn is the fourth place finish. And Trevor Kuhlman, or excuse me, he's third and Kuhlman fourth. Yes, looked like Minneapolis runners were starting to lose a little steam on that one. Big finish for the Sacred Heart kids, one, two. Next up will be the 200 meter dash girls and boys. Three events left, 200 meter, 3200 meter run and the four by four. We'll be back. Red flags up. Okay, it's time for the 200 meter finals for the girls. Riley Baker for the Lions out in lane six. School record held by Linda Shea in 1992 with a 25-17. Yeah, some girls run that curve and remember Kenton Lomberger could flat run a curve. Yes, he could. They're set, they're off. Baker and Brown will be the runners at the finish line when they get there. Brown from Beloit has been just a little bit faster. This time, Baker's got a lead on her coming out of the curve. Riley Baker, see if she can finish. Brown with the closing speed. Riley and Bailey Brown, it's a photo I think, finish. I think Baker got her. Holy mackerel, that was close. 25.87 unofficial. Well, she ran 25. That's two seconds faster than her best. And 25.72. Well, I don't know that I've I've read in the results that she's beat Brown this year. 
That was her best was 27.48. That was a heck of a race there by Riley Baker. I think she might have clipped Bailey Brown at the finish. And as I mentioned there, sometimes that 200 is a better race. 25.17 again is the school record. And unofficially, I had Riley Baker at 25.87 in that race. I remember Drew Weedle used to beat Jordy Nelson in the 200, and it's just because Drew ran a better curve. Yep. But flat out speed, if you'd gone another three steps, Jordy Nelson would have won the race. And I remember him watching him do that his <laughs> senior year. <laughs> Wasn't that fantastic? On his birthday at the state. That was fun. State track has had its moments, hasn't it? Yeah, it sure has. We have witnessed some memorable finishes. Boys, I do not see a Lions uniform over there. Oh, I'm asleep at the wheel. I need to be looking to see if we've got a boys 200. Gyro did not qualify, neither did Colton. I don't think we've got a qualifier. No, I don't think so either. So we will listen for the final results of the girls 200 meter, see if it ended up the way we thought it did. And the next step for Minneapolis will be a 3200 meter run, most probably in the girls and or the boys. Okay, here we go, the boys 3200. And I didn't get a time on it. I wasn't ready. Randall Runyon and Isaac Cooter, the two runners for Minneapolis, both runners trying to gain a little position. Runyon took care of that right off the get-go. He's jumped out to the start, but he's, I don't know why he hasn't cascaded over into, uh, the guys are catching him. He needs to move over. Still hasn't moved over. Now he has. It'll be the Sacred Heart kid that same kid, wasn't it, that ran at the uh, Minneapolis Invitational? I don't recall whether he was there or not. He might have been. The bullet runner passes him. Corey Donnelly runs a 9.47, Dale. Alex Kahn from Bloyd a 9.59. Barnhart runs 10:21, so there's a big there's 30 seconds difference, and then Runyon runs about 11:15. So there's a couple uh, pretty good two milers up there, with the exception Con's not running. And we'll be back. Well, we have the gun lap here on this. Uh, 3,200 meter. Randall Runyon is in seventh, you say? Yes. Here he comes. No. Nope. Where's he at? I lost him. Coming now. He's been a consistent seventh throughout. Nope, that's not him there. Oh, he's over here. No, that's Cooter. Over there. We lost him. We lost Randall. Here he comes up the home stretch right now. Okay, so they're getting ready to go into their gun lap. Here comes that Conley kid to finish. Man, he's good. Corey Conley, without a doubt, one of the better two uh, two milers, and he just motors right on around this thing. Time. And here comes Isaac Cooter. 9.47. Cooter's got another lap to go. Corey Conley, a 9.47. Alex Kahn from Beloit is just 100 meters away now. So that's how good that Conley kid is. Here's second place right here, Kahn, Southeast, third, Bloit, fourth. 
he was running for Minneapolis, he would have broken the Minneapolis record by five seconds. That's something. Two, we've had some good two milers. Yep. Held by Needle Block Hunter, nine fifty two point two nine. Comes Runyon. This will be uh, about a, I think I've got Runyon about sixth or seventh since uh, those guys finished in front of me. I think he stayed right at seventh all the way through. I don't have a clock time on him. I apologize. And Mr. Cooter coming around the bend right now. Good finish. And Isaac trying to catch the Sacred Heart kid in front of him. A little putting on a sprint, yeah. He will short. not catch. Awful close. Isaac Cooter with a good finish. About ninth. And there's three more, three more runners on the track. Four more runners on the track. We'll be back with the final events. The third, four by four. Four by four. Our favorites. Action. Okay, here we go. Four by four action. Riley Baker is going to lead it off for Minneapolis. In lane four. Ladies are out there. We'll see if there's anyone that can catch us. Without Grace Peters. Without either. Grace Peters. So we have running for Minneapolis in the four by four. Girls will be Riley Baker, Lucy up. Giles, Ashlyn Macy, and Kennedy Allison. Hey, Branson, set. Oh. Oh. This has got. No, Minneapolis is in it. I don't know who the first runner is. It's Riley Baker. No, that's Ashlyn Macy. I think. Yes, that is Ashlyn Macy. Just three teams. Yeah, amazing. That's yeah, four by four. Incredible. That's incredible. Well, they had. Uh, well, you're right. Three teams. They had uh, Baker leading off, but it doesn't look like her. Baker will run next, it looks like, and this is definitely Ashlyn Macy. I can tell by the her oh. gait and the way the hair is flying. Yeah, the ponytail flopping. Riley Baker does not have the ponytail. Coming out of the turn, Ashlyn Macy with the lead, and she she is a heck of a competitor, isn't she? Yep. She gets out in the lead and just try and take that lead away from her. She's going to hang hand off to Riley Baker. Good handoff, Minneapolis leading this thing by a long ways and with Riley Baker with the second carry in this four by four, Minneapolis with a sizable lead now cascades over to the pylon. 102.95 split for Ashland. Riley's down to 200 meters to go on this leg. Baker with a sizable lead here. We'll hand off to Kennedy Allison. Baker 27.29, Riley Baker won the 100 meters. 200. 200 meters, excuse me, yes. Now Riley will hand off to Kennedy Allison. Kennedy filling in quite well here tonight as we've had a couple of a sick one and an injury to a couple of our relay team members. Kennedy is a very good runner. I'm going to have to go over there and ask him what that time was again for Right off. I heard him say 27.29. I think that's what I heard. 27 something. Better than I had it. Kennedy Allison with a 60 meter lead.
we'll give it to Giles here at the end, but uh, Minneapolis no problem here in the ladies four by four. 103 point, no. Yeah, 103.36 was the second leg. Who was that runner again? Now, Lucy Giles with the anchor leg. Giles is looking. Riley Baker was the second leg. This is okay. Lucy Giles. Allison was the third leg. Yes. And Ashlyn Macy led it off for the girls. Look, Giles, go down that back stretch. Riley Baker did beat the Brown girl in the 200 meter with a personal best, almost matching her aunt's time. In 1992. We're going to have to go verify that. 27 and change is picking them up and laying them down. And this is R Lucy Giles doing it up the home stretch here. And Minneapolis will finish a good 70, 60 meters ahead. <laughs> Unofficial That's time impressive. overall of 414.34. Four hundred three point seven five is the Minneapolis record. Their uh, best is a four hundred seven. They ran four fourteen, and they didn't have Grace Peters. Yeah. Um, Macy, one hundred two point nine five. Baker with a one hundred three point three six. Allison, one hundred three point six nine. You're right there. And Giles, one hundred four point three four. Very four, four, consistent 14, all the way through. Girls, four by four. Nice relay right there, ladies. We'll be back for the boys. Okay, the boys, four by four is up. Minneapolis in what lane, Mike? Way out there in eight. Okay. Minneapolis will run. Hunter Clark. Gunner Mick, Matt Comfort, and Corey Egger. Not too bad of a four by four. That guy's running like Corey Egger, but I can't tell. Yes, it is Corey Egger. Comfort, Clark, and Mick. Yet to run, Corey Egger starting way out there in lane seven. A heck of a good 400 opening leg, wouldn't I, you say, Dale? Yes. He will hand off to Gunner Mick, I think. Sure looks like him. They are allowed to cascade over now. Look at Gunner. Go down that back stretch. Yep. And he's got the lead. Going into the third turn there, Minneapolis jumps out to the lead. Gunner Mick with the carry for Minneapolis. Four by four. Getting the challenge from behind though by Sacred Heart. That's that Corey Donnelly kid. He can, uh, he, he can sprint also. No, that's not. No, it's not Donnelly. No. Gunner's going to hand it off to Matt Comfort. Matt Comfort. Matt running himself into shape here has been idle for quite a while with the physical therapy on that surgically repaired knee. He's holding steady about seven, eight meters behind. Here. Right there. Take your heart with the lead. Comfort right there. Yeah. 
It's a race. Sacred Heart and lead Minneapolis there. Bloyd's gonna catch Comfort. Comfort will hand off to Hunter Clark. Sacred Heart in the lead. Bloyd pressing Hunter Clark. Clark's gonna have to run like there's no tomorrow because he has got a competitor coming up right on his hip now. Still with 200 meters to go, Sacred Heart's gonna win this thing. Bloyd is in second, Minneapolis a close third. Clark's gonna have to hammer on it to get back into second place. Bloyd runner, we will not catch him. Good, good relay, Minneapolis third place finish for the boys. Hunter Clark finishes up for the Lions. 334.71 unofficial. That is three seconds faster than their best so far, so they PR'd in the four by four. The record is 325.35 set in 2005. Splits tonight for runner number one, who was Corey Yeager, 52.3 unofficial. Second lap, who was Mick, is that right? Yes. 52.31. Third lap, who was Comfort. Comfort, 55.09. Okay. Yes. And the final lap, 55.01. Hunter Clark. Mm -hmm. 334.71. That's pretty good overall for three, yeah, not three guys bad. sitting in 55 seconds to have it at 334.71. Not too bad. Record holder, 2005, 325.35. Kyle and Kenton Lonberger. Ryan Mortimer and Jeff Doring. That was a team. Oh my gosh. And, uh, you know, one of the mo more surprising ones, we knew the Longburgers were fast, but that Jeff Doring was something to be all the way. He just really surprised me with his running ability. 26 in the back in the 200 meters again, where Riley Baker nipped Brown. Uh, Baker's time was 26.28, Brown's was 26.33. That was close. We knew it was close from here, but we couldn't really tell for sure. Dale thought Riley Baker had won that race, Pers but uh, I was pretty unsure. Personal best for Baker. Um, again, the school record's 25.17, her aunt Linda's time. So just a shade under a second slower. Been a pretty fast runner. She's <laughs> almost there. <laughs> Do that at state. Well, we hope you watched, enjoyed watching this uh, NCAA track meet here at Salina Central Stadium. And Dale Leach and Mike Perry going to sign off for Eagle Communications and the linebackers. It's the league. We track might meet. be at regionals next week in Beloit. We shall see. But we definitely will be at state in a couple weeks. Thanks for watching, as always, and having us in your home. Good night, folks.